Hello, good day, everyone. I, I guess you can hear me. Um, at ERI, we're very happy to uh, to be supporting this conference. And uh, yeah, I'm sorry I can't be with you physically. Uh, like some of the other virtual presenters, nearly made it. And uh, I must thank the the Lithuanian um, uh, ministry for for actually agreeing that they would waive my my quarantine. But unfortunately, the same day they did that. Um, Scandinavian Airways unfortunately cancelled my flight, so it looks like uh, everything was transpiring against me to be with you, but I'm here uh, virtually. And uh, I'm going to continue maybe the, the theme a little bit uh, of movies. We've had Fifty Shades of Grey and uh, maybe Lord of the Rings, etc. So now I'm taking you back to, to the future. If my slide will move, yes, okay. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to very briefly tell a, a little bit about uh, ERI because I'm guessing that uh, most of you uh, do not know us. And then we'll get into the, the what of, of a digital journey, the why it needs to be made, um, and the when and, and how. Um, so just going through the, the steps. So very quickly about ERI. Um, we're a 30-year-old fintech, um, and we're quite unusual these days in, in our market that uh, we're a single product company. So we focus on only one product, the Olympic banking system, and in fact that system has grown completely organically over the 30 years. We have not acquired other companies, etc. Um, it's all built by us, and of course our mission is to help our clients banks and financial services institutions grow their business profitably, which uh, at the moment is a yeah, pretty hard task. Even before COVID-19, you know, the regulator was increasing the burden and there's digital innovation. It was already difficult and it's probably getting harder. So as I said, we're, we're 30 years old, but we're still relatively small. Um, and uh, yeah, so we have over 300 institutions in over 55 countries worldwide, which we manage with only about 400 staff, which I think is a testament to um, the stability of the, the banking platform that we provide. Our origins are our private banking and wealth management. The company was founded in, in Switzerland and Luxembourg almost simultaneously. Um, and driven by those banking markets. But for today, we're used by almost all types of banks, including central banks. In fact, the, the Central Bank of Luxembourg is a, is a user of our system, and we have um, over 25% market share uh, in Luxembourg. And uh, yeah, given that we're, we're relatively small compared to some of the competitors that you may have heard of, this slide also may come as a bit of a surprise to, to the audience that actually when it comes to mid-tier uh, institutions, we're, we're the leader in Western Europe. And of course, we would like to now leverage that, uh, that position and move into, into the Baltics and Nordic region as well. So that's a little bit about us and, uh, and who ERI is. So now we're going to talk about uh, the digital journey. So um, I'm going to start with quite a, a personal thing, really, actually. It was back in 1981, my first experience of, of opening a bank account was, um, and I'm showing my age here a little bit, was basically I went along to, to Barclays. And the reason for that was I happened to play cricket with, and uh, my father did too, um, cricket and hockey with the local branch manager of Barclays. So he knew us very well. He knew the family very well. And uh, Barclays had a, a good, very good brand reputation. Um, and, uh, but the, the whole idea of banking was that it was about trust. And I know that that's been mentioned already by a previous speaker that you know, trust is very important when it comes to banking. Not only did I trust the bank manager and the bank, but he also had trust in me. And actually at the age of 15, he already gave me a credit card. I was issued with a Barclay card credit card and it was a real credit card. 
not one of these quasi debit cards that you get today where you still have to clear the balance at the end of each month. This was a real credit card that had a real limit on it and I could carry over that limit at the age of 15. And of course that was because there was trust. Um, he, you know, he knew that even if I let him down somehow, um, then he could rely on my family to, to probably bail me out. And in fact, I stayed with Barclays for 30 years um, and only left Barclays probably because uh, I no longer had any ties at all with the UK. But now we're in 2020 and uh, you know, all that the banking industry is really talking about is, is digital transformation. And, and that means um, you know, different things to different organizations. There are different benefits, business benefits. Um, and returns on the investment of what that digital journey may mean for them. Um, and I think that we're all recognizing too, it's not just about the technology. Technology is important, but there's the culture too, not only internally uh, within the financial services institution, but also uh, the culture of the, of the client base is changing as well, which I'll come on to in, in some of the later slides. And, you know, that's, Digital journey can be about the user and customer experience, um, optimizing, automating both front and back office processes, dematerializing processes, in fact, dematerializing everything. I mean, as we're in this conference today, we have a mixture of, <laughs> if you like, I'm dematerialized because I'm attending virtually. And of course, we have the physical presence as well. And also support for, for new products and services um, that are, are going to attract the next generation of customers, but at the same time also generate some revenue, which um, that is, is proving an interesting challenge for, for financial services institutions. And uh, yeah, it's also interesting that you know, generations are, are typically described as between 20 to 30 years, whether it's yeah, just from an age point of view, the fashion, but I think also from technology, we see that we sometimes go full circle, the, the, the buzzwords change, but actually the technology we're talking about has kind of gone full circle. We go from uh, you know, middleware orchestrating lots of different components, and then the term, I mean, and then we go back to um, uh, siloed systems, and then we break it down again into to fintechs with their, their little APIs and apps, all trying to link that together. And yeah, we, we seem to basically go round and round in these circles every 20 or so years, and we probably will continue to do that. Um, it's maybe getting easier, but there's still, it's, it's tricky. I mean, you build a system, you can think of Lego, which is obviously a, a Nordic thing. And, uh, you know, Lego bricks fit together very, very well if they're all made by Lego. But if you start to introduce a Lego lookalike from China, they look alike, but they don't necessarily fit quite so well together. And um, I think we see the same sometimes with technology, that things that are supposed to work together with this uh, new concept of components and services don't necessarily always work that way. But the digital journey is critical. And, uh, you know, as I said, we're in a unique uh, era of business challenges. The regulator is piling on the pressure. Uh, productivity has to, to improve all the time. There's increased complexity. Um, clients are demanding more sophisticated services. And yeah, the financial services institutions have to find new sources of revenue with new products and service innovation. Uh, transaction fees, the pressure on them has, has reduced them almost to nothing. Payment services have arguably flown the coop already. and uh, and interest income is not so easy to come by. I mean, in some places, you're talking about negative interest rates. And then, yeah, we heard today a lot about uh, some of the uh, kind of macroeconomic challenges of, of banking in the global playground. But there's also this huge shift in, uh, in wealth, if you like, that's going to happen over the next 10 to 25 years that the banks and financial services companies also have to, to deal with. Um, 
I mean, not all of the research agrees, but uh, you know, on the low end, they're expecting something like eight trillion to change hands over the next ten years, and at the high end, maybe sixty trillion euros over the next twenty-five years. So this really means that anyone providing financial services um, has to really adapt their products and, and to to deliver to this new digital market, this new digital generation. And you know, as I think also was mentioned earlier, they're not necessarily as loyal as as uh, previous generations. You know, research again has shown that over 28% of clients' children will discontinue the relationship with their parents' financial services provider. So how are we going to stop these customers from from jumping from into into another pond? Um, you know, how are we going to 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 attract or keep these clients within like the traditional conventional financial services companies and and not let them disappear into the gaffers and and other um, neo banks or neo financial services institutions that are that are out there and uh, again I mean, a previous speaker he talked about trust and this is something I'll I'll come on to as well the key there's a digit there's a greater focus on digital channels um, social socially responsible investing and, and social media all of these things are coming much more into play and yeah, clients the new generation are demanding much more digital interaction when it comes to to delivery of those services and they you know this new generation they're they're what we call the sandwich generation because they're they're having to to look after their older um, members of their family and they're somehow sandwiched between them and also their own, the younger generation, their own children. Um, so they're having to, to think about life planning in terms of education, healthcare, uh, restructuring maybe the, the existing debt within that they have or maybe the family has. There's, there's a lot more to it in terms of financial services provision than there maybe was with previous generations. Which creates opportunities, of course, for the the providers. So, yeah, I mean, the quote from the movie "Roads Where We're Going," we don't need roads. Well, um, I'm not sure we're quite there yet. Um, even the Tesla still needs a road. But uh, one thing is clear: is that uh, for financial services institutions and banks to to stay relevant. Um, you know, they they need trust, and you see it actually. Um, <laughs> I spent seven years in Africa, and practically every bank has trust in their name. I mean, actually, it's quite ironic because they're uh, they're probably the least trustworthy bank, some of them. But um, trust is is key to why people use banks. You know, it it, it was safe custody of of physical uh, assets. You know, money was physical before. Um, and securities, you know, shared certificates, etc. It was physical safe custody. Now we're talking about um, digital safe custody, which may also become commoditized. It may just go into the distributed ledger. So the trust now has to move to being probably the trusted advisor. If you're going to use a financial services institution, you have to trust that they are going to give you the best advice and actually, the transaction processing and the custody is happening just digitally in in the ether somewhere in the cloud. And how do you do that? Well, I mean, obviously, our system we like to think is is one of the one of the well adapted systems to that. Um, but it doesn't really, you know, it would. I'm getting uh, time up. <laughs> from the green room, um, which is fine because this is my last slide. Um, I mean, basically, you want to have vendors that, uh, in your, that you're looking at that are covering all of these areas so that they're covering industry standards. They work with fintechs because we can't exclude them. We want to work with them. But their technology is adapted to the latest ways of deploying it, whether it's in the cloud, um, that they're using latest technology, AI, understanding blockchain, all of these things are, are really important. And, um, you know, as 
I think it was, uh, and it may be interesting to Darius going back to the trust thing. We work very closely actually with KPMG in Luxembourg, uh, who actually are the ones who provide our system on in the SaaS environment. Because in Luxembourg, we have a unique regulatory environment where actually if you provide the system through SaaS, you have to be regulated by the regulator. Anyway, that's, uh, that's my 10 minutes. That's a quick back to the future banking. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.